white cast lies, sunscreen misinformation, and the single supplement now proven to make a difference in your skin that will also save you hundreds if not thousands of dollars. Welcome back to Pillow Talk Germ, where we do this thing every Saturday morning. Who the hell am I? I'm Dr. Shireen Idris, and I may or may not be channeling my little red Robin Hood, my little red riding hood, my inner, you know what? Just call me little red derming hood. I don't know who that character is, what her name is, but you know who I'm talking about because I'm about to save you hundreds if not thousands of dollars in today's video. So feel free to subscribe, like, and follow along. For those of you who watched last week, stay tuned till the end of the video where I announce the winner of this week's current body giveaway. But let's start off this video by talking about the white cast wars taking over our social media platforms by storm because ever since 2025 struck midnight, every single brand has rushed to launch a mineral sunscreen with the promise associated that there will be zero white cast. News flashes that most, if not all of them, I would argue, have a white cast. And I am not angry. I am not upset because it's about damn time that we stop pretending that this powder, this opaque white powder, also known as zinc oxide, if it is to do its job correctly, will go on transparently onto your skin. And the reason we need to stop pretending and stop spreading this false idea of a dream is that in the process, we have now alienated a whole subset of the population, people of color from the conversation entirely. And that's the real issue here. The real issue is that over the past few years, the beauty industry has shifted so far to one extreme, demonizing chemical sunscreens so, so hard that no brand is willing to bet on a chemical sunscreen and no brand is willing to put that investment forward. And instead, they've rushed to put out these mineral sunscreens with such false hopes and dreams associated with them, even when it leaves half the population ghosted, which it does quite literally. So let's, let's take a step back and set the record straight. When we're talking about filters, when we're talking about sunscreens as a whole, there are two broad categories, right? There are mineral filters and there are chemical filters. The mineral filters are known as the inorganic filters, and I'm talking about zinc and I'm talking about titanium. Whereas when I'm talking about the chemical filters, there's a whole slew of them from avobenzone, octisylate, oxybenzone. There's a bunch of them on this category. And Side note, did I mention that the chemical filters are called organic? So had we just labeled them as organic filters from the beginning, then I think negligence would have never called them dangerous, but that's beyond this conversation. So brands know this. They know that there is this difference. And so they are now opting to create these mineral sunscreens with zinc or titanium. They also know that zinc and titanium are these larger particles that can never really become transparent. It's like saying you're going to make gold. You're an alchemist of some sort. It's not real. It's not going to happen. They've been marketing it as zero white cast associated with the actual sunscreen. And how do they get there? They try to mix in iron oxides to give it some sort of flesh colored tone at various different levels. Most of the mineral sunscreens that get launched work for skin types one, two, maybe three. But once you go above three, once you're into the four, five, six, you are casting those people out completely. But I also want to say as someone who is very fair, Using a mineral sunscreen, even though it may not necessarily leave a white visible cast, one thing I've noticed is that my teeth can appear yellower. Believe it or not, if you put something super white against me, look how much yellow that I hear is versus like this. So that is sort of my own litmus test as I look at the color of my teeth and if they look slightly yellower, not for me. People of color apply it. They clearly look like they are getting ghosted i.e. Casper, i.e. a joke is being played on them. And they're not represented in the sunscreen marketing whatsoever. Or worse, they've been lied to all along. And that is a very dangerous message. And I would argue it's not just bad skincare education. I really do think it is public health negligence. Because now you're telling people of color that they don't really need then the sunscreen, but that is not true. Let's talk about chemical sunscreens, shall we? Because it's been a witch hunt on the internet and Everybody from the holier than thou to the granola bar eaters to the ones who claim that they are experts claim some sort of endocrine disruption, coral bleaching, we're all, we've all become environmentalist experts of some sort, but let's get one thing straight. Many of these claims come from animal studies, animals, who the dose on which the sunscreen was applied is nowhere near what you are applying to yourself as a human being. The concentration, 
is much higher and the settings are unrealistic. And when it comes to the coral reef, again, those experiments were done in very, very concentrated, hard to recreate, unrealistic concentrations. The reality is the boats, global warming, petrol, the fishing industry is all contributing to the coral reef getting endangered in a far greater fashion than sunscreen alone. I think everything has been blown out of proportion. And yes, while certain filters might not be for you, maybe you get irritated, maybe they're just not sitting nicely on your skin, maybe you just can't tolerate them, that doesn't mean all the filters are not for you. And side note, Korean sunscreens, the love of everyone online, like they just discovered the newest thing since sliced bread. A lot of them are much more cosmetically elegant because they may not be irritating, but guess what they're made up of? Chemical filters. They're not made up of mineral filters. And even if they do have mineral filters, they have boosters in them as well, which fall into the chemical filter category. So they're hybrids. And therefore, if you're demonizing chemical sunscreens, but you're loving your Korean sunscreen, check your label because that is a new slash for you. Which leads me to all this misinformation and what happens when you don't use SPF? Well, other than the fact that you may get skin cancer, because let's forget about our health sake, okay? Let's just be vain human beings because that is what drives a lot of people. People don't really care about their health. And if you really want me to be very real with you, the reason I went to, into dermatology is because I didn't want to convince people that they had high blood pressure. I wanted people to see what they have so I can help them help themselves and I don't need to convince you of something that you cannot see. That is the truth. And when it comes to the sun and your health, people don't care about the skin cancer. They care about how it's gonna make them look. Now in the short term, you will look like a bronzed goddess, but that tan that you just developed is the sign of future sun damage. And the reality is the UV damage caused by the sun will lead to premature collagen breakdown, weakening of your skin barrier, and acceleration of your pigmentation, sunspots, and photoaging which in my world is the biggest sign of aging. It's not the lines, it's not the wrinkles, it's not the sagging, it's the sunspots that make you look messy. Your freckles are cute when you're 20, but once you hit 30 and they start growing and they start kind of meshing together, you start looking messy and ruddy and that makes you look older, not necessarily wiser. And therefore, this is where things get juicy because with the sun comes vitamin D production. And then you have all of these people online who claim if you're using sunscreen, you're not getting vitamin D. That has been debunked. Why? Because we're not using nearly enough sunscreen as we should be using, nor are we applying it as much as we should be applying it. And yours truly falls into this category. Why do you think I love UV visors? Why do you think I love UPF rash guards? Because I don't remember to reapply every two hours on the dot. And I'm probably not using nearly as much as I should be using. But in my world, something is better than nothing. But this brings in Harvard. Harvard has run the mother of all mothers of studies, a randomized controlled trial for four years where they looked at vitamin D3, specifically 2000 international units taken per day over four years. And what they found was that the telomeres, so if you look at your chromosomes, there's a little part at the edge of your chromosome known as a telomere. The telomeres on our chromosomes are longer and vitamin D leads to less DNA damage. Longer telomeres basically means healthier cells, basically means slower aging. Shorter telomeres means damaged cells, means faster aging. So vitamin D increases the length of our telomeres, protecting our DNA, protecting our cells from getting damaged and basically making us age slower which is wild. It's not a product, it's not a cream, it's not a topical serum, it's not a bullshit miracle powder, AKA a lot of the collagen supplements on the market, which we will talk about in a hot second. It is something that is truly proven to work. And the best part is it costs you nothing. It costs you anywhere from five to $35 a month. But we will talk about how to take vitamin D3 because that is also important. And I wanna make sure that you guys are understanding how you should take it. But before I do this, other benefits of vitamin D. When you're taking it internally, there's no white cast. Vitamin D is not going to protect you, though, from the sun. It does not replace SPF. But what it does do is it helps to regulate your mood. It helps to increase your immune function by helping your immune function function. It helps to regulate um, your inflammatory response. You're not as hyper inflamed internally. And it does also increase your overall energy boost. But it's just important to remember that a supplement is meant to supplement. 
it's not meant to be the basis of everything. So yes, I do believe in going outside. I don't believe in going outside when the UV index is really high between um, 10 a.m. and 3 p.m. in July and sitting there for an hour, but going for a morning walk, getting your UV rays, making sure your circadian rhythm is getting you know rebalanced, that's all great, but I do it also with SPF. And my vitamin D levels, before I even started taking vitamin D supplements, were not crazy low to the point where I was at, I was at a deficit. So I had checked them prior, and although I am currently on vitamin D because of this study and because of trying to make my life overall better, I don't let these supplements take over my life. But how do we take vitamin D is a question that I get asked. So you want to look for vitamin D3, also known as cholecalciferol, C-H-O-L-E-C-A-L-T-I-F-E-R-O-L. It is the most bioavailable and you, di you actually absorb it better when you take it after eating a fattier meal. So don't take it on an empty stomach in the morning, have breakfast, have some coffee with cream or milk or eggs or whatever it is, and then take it afterwards so you can absorb it better. But in order to take vitamin D3, it is best paired with vitamin K2 because you want to make sure that that calcium goes straight to your bones and not your arteries. And last, magnesium has also been shown to help activate vitamin D in the body. But the good news is you don't need to take the magnesium with the vitamin D and the vitamin K2. You can take them at separate times of day. So what do I do? I take vitamin D3 with vitamin K2 in the morning. There are several brands that I like. Um, there is one known as K-Force. If you are in the deficient range, they are slightly higher. I believe at anywhere from 3,000 to 5,000 I use a day. You just, just don't want to go crazy over there, but make sure a doctor is checking your blood. Thorn has a D3 plus K2 liquid that you can take if you're not into pills. Now Foods also has a D3 and K2 supplement that you can also take as well. I will link them below. In terms of magnesium, there are two types of magnesium that I play around with. I have, um, for those of you who do not know this, IBS, and so my bowel movements go from here to there, TMI. Magnesium glycinate helps me relax more and go to sleep, whereas if I am in an IBS issue where I'm not using the restroom, magnesium citrate helps to regulate your bowel movements. And I take anywhere from 600 to 900 a day, milligrams a day, and I take it usually around 6 or 7 p.m. to help me relax for the evening so I can sleep better and just wake up more regulated. So I take either the magnesium citrate or the magnesium glycinate around 6 or 7 p.m. So that is how you take vitamin D, which leads me to other supplements on the market that might have been breaking your bank, like a lot of the collagen supplements that really have become a multi-billion dollar industry. Now, years ago, I used to say they're absolutely useless. The reality is newer studies have come up that show that hydrolyzed collagen might show some benefit when you ingest it because maybe it's tricking your fibroblasts into promoting collagen production and it's also helping with increased hydration. Results take a long time for that to happen. Additionally, the studies that have come out that have shown this are somewhat controversial in the sense that they are funded by the companies that promote collagen and make collagen. So there's no gold standard as of yet, like a randomized controlled trial like the Harvard study. And therefore, I find it hard for me to tell you guys to take collagen supplements and to spend all this money on collagen supplements when there hasn't been a neutral party evaluating the effects of collagen supplements. Can there be value? Yes. Anecdotally, have people told me there's value for them? Sure. And do I believe in placebo? Yes. Am I saying this maliciously or am I trying to be funny? No, I think placebo is actually a very powerful thing. But if you have a certain amount of money that you are willing to spend, spend it on the vitamin D supplements over the collagen supplements because that has been really proven, tried, and true. Plus, at a cellular level, it's not just helping with hydration, it's helping to slow down your aging process from that skin inwards because it's affecting all of your cells dna and so i would vote for vitamin d3 over collagen all day every day if you had to make me pick now if you can do both you do you i applaud you but other ways you can boost your collagen other than supplements is obviously eating a high protein diet a collagen rich diet i will link my collagen video below from a other lifestyle situation ship you can cut out sugars i believe in everything in moderation i'd rather be a happy human than a miserable one with collagen so i 
I have sugars every once in a while throughout the week, but I'm not like binging on a box of Oreo cookies like I used to do in my 20s. Additionally, topical products like vitamin C and retinoids can also help boost collagen production, especially retinoids, and exfoliating regularly with glycolic acid has also been shown to boost collagen in the long run. So those are some tried and trues. So this is your glow up prescription of the week. You're gonna wear your sunscreen and you're gonna wear one that you actually use, whether it is mineral or chemical, just wear it. Two full fingers, ideally, not a thin little strip, but a nice strip to get your day going and to get that glow going. And if you love sunscreen, put your calendar on for June 30th. Um, and additionally, if you want to support healthy aging from the inside out, it's not just about sunscreen. Certain supplements can help supplement your lifestyle like vitamin D3, which I just spoke about in this video. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up. Let me know what you guys wanna learn about next week. And now for everyone's favorite part, our giveaway announcement winner from last week, the lucky winner of the current body mask that I'm going to ship to you is NGAL9109. And if you watched till now, you deserve to win. Anyway, hope you guys have a beautiful weekend and I will catch you guys next week.